Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Clever Dev. Today we are going to answer the question of when to use SX, which is what has styled this paper component here, when to use theme overrides, which I've used to style these buttons here, and when to use the styled API to create styled components, which is how I have made these radio buttons here. If you want to learn about this, then stick around. So I've stripped off the styling from the SX prop, the styled API, and the theme. And really the question that we need to answer is, why do we use one versus the other uh, for any of these three options? So um, the thing to point out is that I use the SX prop on a one-time styling. There's a paper component. This is a form wrapped in a paper component. and that's exactly when you want to use the SX prop. One time, one off. It's kind of like a mix between using inline styling and using um, the class uh, class styling. So anyway, let's go ahead and apply that SX prop on this paper value. Actually, let me go back for a moment and just show you what, what code I've got in place already. So I've got a simple form, as you saw, and it's really not about the form. It's really about the question that we're answering today. So um, I will be importing a form theme and I will be importing a styled component for those radio buttons, but I don't really have anything in those files yet. So anyway, like I said, we've got this form. Uh, it's actually wrapping paper. I said that backwards, but anyway, let's go ahead and use that SX prop right here. And the first thing I'm gonna add is some background color. And I went ahead and copy pasted that because it's quite a long color. Um, anyway, let's get a min width here. Um, let's see, a little bit of padding would be good. Just set that at two and some elevation. Quite a bit of elevation because I like it to be pretty obvious for these videos. Let's see. So here we are with that uh, padding in place. And I think I'm actually, I think I need to switch that to box shadow. Some of the components have elevation, but um, I think paper does outside of the SX prop. So either one of those works. Anyway, so here we have that box shadow on here. So I don't have any other components that need that precise styling. So that's when you want to use the SX prop. Pretty clear cut there. Now I could have used the styled API and created a styled component to make this form styled this way, or this paper component styled this way. I could have gone into the theme and customized the styling for paper. However, that's kind of like too much, so to speak. It uh, takes a fair amount of code to do the overrides in the theme. Um, the styled component takes uh, just some imports and so on. Those things are more code um, when really you don't need it in this case. So the next thing we need to do is <clears throat> we'll go ahead and do the styled API. And I like to think about these things. Uh, this, we'll use the styled API to make some radio buttons that are that we'll call styled radio buttons. Um, I think of it in terms of like the SX prop is the least abstraction, styled API is more abstraction, and the theme is the most abstraction. Because with the theme, someone might use, uh, let's say, a button when I have updated that. They might use the button without even realizing that it's been that it's not just the default MUI styling on that button. With the radios here, they'll know if you have teammates, you're working on a team project, they would absolutely know that they're using a styled component because it'll have different a different name than radio. So anyway, let's go over to our styled radio. Now we need to do one more import, and that import will be the styled API. And that is from MUI Material Styles. It was one of the more confusing ones because I think I could have just pulled it from at MUI Styles, and there's no difference. Anyway, this is one I usually do, and from my keyword research, that's actually what most people do. So anyway, with styled components, then we just got to get the syntax just right. I'm going to call it Styled Radio. And first we pass it the component that we are overriding. 
and next we give it a whole bunch of um, props and options, potentially. Kind of depends on what you want to do. syntax is just a little bit tricky sometimes. There we go. Okay, so from here it's just whatever um, you could pass. There's a couple options that I could pass. I'm not going to get into that, but I have a different video on that. Um, but anyway, from here it's just whatever color uh, styling we want to set and um, any other CSS values we want to set. So I set the color to green. There's actually, um, I'm going to go ahead and import the styled radio right now over here to my form and I'm going to replace the radios. I'm going to do that import instead of import radio. I'm going to import um, my value to sibling. So that should be all we need there. And always got to have proper kind of import. So there we go. Okay, so VS Code says everything's worked out well. My compiler says everything's worked out well. You can see I've already got those green circles around that. Um, but we're actually going to get a little more complex in the styling of this radio component here. And I am actually going to make sure that when it's checked, then we keep a green color instead of, you can see how that has um, hit a blue circle around it and it's lost its green and we'll also um, actually style this inner circle um, when it's checked so that's actually a little bit tricky to do not so much the the focus of this video but I just want to have um, kind of a, a deep dive into all of it let's actually use that okay so MUI, MUI supplies a nice checked value on this component when it is checked and we'll just set the color to um, set it to green again and then what that should do is get us our circle back here so you can see okay it's all green now um, I'm actually going to change that inner circle to orange just so there's a little more pop when it's checked and to do that I will actually target the SVG element down in there. Now the SVG is a little bit tricky to target. Um, I'm not going to get into the details there, but if we want to precisely target that circle, I actually, looking at the DOM, found that I needed to target a custom attribute called test ID. And that was the value on it. And now let's set color to orange. And hopefully I got that value right. We'll be able to see. Yep, there we go. Let's actually look at the DOM just because that's kind of interesting. Getting a little off topic, but that's okay. So you can see it's a little bit hard to precise, precisely target it. See, maybe I won't be able to find it because I'm doing a video. Nope, here we go. So where is that custom class? You can see that custom, excuse me, attribute that I had to target right there. Um, there's two different SVGs, and I forget what happened when I targeted this one, but uh, or when I just targeted SVGs, but basically, um, if at first you're not getting it to style exactly what you want, then just go digging around a little bit more in the DOM. Don't be afraid of the DOM with the MUI. It can be complicated. Know your nested selectors for sure, um, but you'll accomplish what you want. Anyway, back to our original question of um, when to use these different styling options. So now you can see um, this requires, from the perspective of this form, the styling is completely abstracted. Now I know I'm not using the default radio, that's okay. Um, it's still pretty abstract, uh, but a team member would have to know that this exists. Let's say I've coded this and my team member needs to use it on you know, some other component they need to know about its existence. So there is a little bit of um, knowledge required there. Now let's look at these buttons. Um, I am going to style them without changing this code on this, in this um, 
in within this stack at all. I will have to do uh, use a theme provider, but that's all. So anyway, this is the most abstract um, portion uh, or possibility that MUI provides for styling. And yeah, I mentioned I have to include a style provider, uh, a theme provider, excuse me, but perhaps that would be wrapping somewhere in the app well above this component that we're working on. So once again, people may use um, a custom theme without even knowing it. You know, team members may be using custom themes without knowing them or understanding them. So super abstract option right here. So let's go into our form code. Now, it's kind of like the more abstract we get, the more knowledge, uh, the more syntax knowledge you have to have. So you can see that I have um, imported create theme here and um, we do need that, but really it's the syntax inside of the theme that gets kind of complicated. So I'll call it style form theme and then I'll use that create theme and then let's actually get down to the syntax inside of here. So I am familiar with the syntax, with the nesting and the fields and so on, simply from doing research on it. So um, if you want to override the default styling, you have to access this components field and within there, you'll have things like MUI button. You can see some of the other components, MUI icon button, MUI button base. So um, you can really override anything, as far as I know, any of the components. And then you have to access this style overrides field. So a little bit complicated. Now within here, there, um, if you're familiar with MUI, you know that in the DOM there's different classes applied. So we are just going to target the root class that's applied. And it can be, it is important in these overrides to know um, about the different classes. So whoever, if you know, you have a team member working on these uh, on a form, uh, excuse me, a uh, theme override, they have to have a lot of a deep MUI knowledge. So this is the most abstract, but it also requires the most MUI knowledge. So let's get a border in there, 2px solid. And let's see what else. How about some text decoration? And um, let's say in width 75, just to make them look nice and even instead of being dependent on the text content inside of them for their width and a margin of two. All right. Looks like this is completely happy. It looks like the compiler is completely happy with our syntax. So now, um, let's see, we need to export this. Oh, wow, that is not how you spell export. So there we go. All right, so we've got our export of stout form theme. So let's go over to our MUI form and actually use this. Um, before I do that import, then I do want to mention uh, if you want to copy paste this code, you can find it in, there's a link in the video details. So it'll take you to a post where I've got all of this code. And also I'm actually trying a new thing uh, with a plural site affiliate link. If you want to support me, I have a link to a free 10 day trial, but I get a little commission for it. So um, definitely check that out. I've used plural site a lot and they are super helpful um, for leveling up your, your skills. In particular, I took a Git course on there and learned a lot more about Git, so I'd recommend that. All right, so now we can use that theme that we've created. So let's go ahead and create and add our imports. And let's see, I think I called that styled form theme. Yep, there we go. Oh, how nice of it to auto import that for us. And the next thing we need is our theme provider. And we'll say that is an MUI material styles. We'll make sure we use the same import as we did with our styled component, our, our styled API import just to be consistent there. Always a good idea. And let's get our theme provider in here. And I will just go ahead and add my 
close my tags. I like to do that before I worry about passing in the theme. So there we go, style form theme. And with that, there we go. Took it a moment to figure things out, but I don't know if you remember how the buttons looked before we had our theme in here, but they were just the default button value, uh, default button stylings. But now they have picked up our gray and our border and so on that we added um, our min, our width here. So um, anyway, I hope that this video has given you the right tool for each given scenario you might find yourself in. Um, hope that you feel you have a grasp of what the pros and cons of each of these options are. And if this was helpful, please do consider subscribing or leaving a comment. It really motivates me.